Okay, this video lecture covers the process of meiosis and how it leads to greater variation in offspring. This is going to help you understand uh, not only this learning target as well as the learning target on comparing mitosis and meiosis, but it will also help you understand genetics and evolution as we go forward because those are processes that require um, variation. And the first thing I'd like you to understand about meiosis is kind of what its purpose is in general. And Meiosis is used by organisms that reproduce sexually. Okay, so they have a sperm and an egg cell. But if you think about those organisms, the normal cell in their body uh, does, is not a sex cell. It can't be used as a sex cell because, at least in humans, there are two copies of each type of chromosome. Okay, so in this case, the types are long and short, and there's two copies. There's a red copy and a, a blue copy of the long one, and a red copy and a blue copy of the short one. Well, you couldn't use that cell as a sex cell because if you combined it with your partner's cell, um, that would create an, or an individual that had four copies of each chromosome, and that just doesn't work. So we need a way to cut that chromosome number in half, and meiosis makes this possible. Okay, so if we, if we see a visualization here, imagine this um, is an egg, and this is a sperm. Okay. Um, this sperm cell could have been created from this individual right over here. Okay, so this individual could have created this sperm cell if it contributed this chromosome and this chromosome to the sperm cell. And meiosis is kind of how it can do that. So then this sperm cell could join this egg cell. The result of that is a new individual. Um, it's called a zygote, which has two copies of each kind of chromosome. Too long, too short, just like a normal human cell should, and that cell can go on and function. You will notice, perhaps, that the colors are different, and that is because the mother will have different DNA from the father. So we use color to show the differences between mother and father in this case, not between types of chromosomes. The types remain the same. There are long types and short types. Um, so this is the official definition of meiosis. Meiosis is the process that cuts the total number of chromosomes in the cell in half by separating homologous pairs of chromosomes. And this process is used to create sex cells. And here we in this, we have a diagram which shows the general process of meiosis. We take one normal body cell, or in this case, a parent cell, as it's called, and we make four daughter cells. And if you pay attention to the chromosomes in those daughter cells, you will notice they have half the number as the original parent, one long, one short, instead of too long and too short. So here's a, a simplified diagram of the process. And I'm going to start over here with this cell. And this would be a normal body cell. That cell would happen to exist in a part of your body that makes sex cells. And the first thing that happens, just like in mitosis, before it um, as part of the cell cycle, which meiosis is an example of the cell cycle, is um, DNA replication. Okay, and we have uh, a copy of each chromosome made. So there's a copy of the long red one made, a copy of the long blue one, a copy of the short blue one, and so on. And then meiosis begins, and prophase happens, or the chromosomes will pair up into their pairs, and then they start to line up in the middle. And you'll notice, um, you may notice, that the way that they line up in the middle, and this is actually called metaphase one. Okay, we've skipped prophase. You don't need to know all the phases in this one in the same way. So in metaphase one, they line up in the middle like they did in mitosis, but it's arranged a little differently. In this case, um, they line up in homologous pairs. And that is a 
um, vocab word that you are going to want to be familiar with. Homo means same. That root word means same. So homologous pairs are pairs of the same type of chromosome. So in this case, the long ones have paired up and the short ones have paired up. Okay. It would not be appropriate for these chromosomes to line up like this, for example. Those are not in homologous pairs. Okay? The color does not tell us anything. So homologous pairs only exist when the long and the short are paired up together. Or the long is paired with long and short is paired with short. The next thing that happens is the first division. Okay? And you will notice that there is going to be two cell divisions in meiosis instead of just one. The first division occurs, and then we get into metaphase two. Again, I'm not going to assess you on those words, but just so you know, it is a metaphase. It's just the second metaphase. And here we have the second division. In this case, the spindle fibers are going to pull on those sister chromatids, pull them apart, until we have four cells. And these are the cells that could become sex cells. So these could all be sperm cells, for instance. Or they could all be egg cells if this was happening in a female. Okay? So, and we have a word for sex cells that I'm going to use from now on, another vocab, which is gametes. Okay, so I'm going to put a box around that word as well, because that is an important word for you to remember, gametes. So then, how does this process of meiosis allow genetic diversity to increase? And so to understand the three ways, there are three ways, that genetically, genetic diversity is increased by meiosis, you first need to understand uh, crossing over. So crossing over happens in a sex cell, or sorry, in a, in a normal cell um, after DNA replication during the first prophase of meiosis. So it's called prophase 1. Now what happens is as these chromosomes are kind of bumping around and lining up and pairing up with their homologous pairs, sometimes a small piece of one of the copies, so perhaps the father's version of the long chromosome will break off, and the same piece on the mother's version will break off, and it will join the homologous pair. So now there's a little bit of the father's DNA on the mother's chromosome and a little bit of the mother's DNA on the father's chromosome. And what ends up happening when you do that is you have increased the diversity. So now these cells will get, or these chromosomes will get segregated um, during the first division. Okay. Um, and when they finally have divided up, you will end up with sex cells. So let's say this cell divides. So we have our first division here. And then if this cell divides, you now are going to have two cells. And one of them is going to have a long blue one, just a normal. And the other is going to have a long blue with just a tiny tag of red. Okay, So that little bit of red makes it genetically different because it has different DNA on it and those little chromosomes I'll put in there and the result of that is we have increased genetic diversity because the chromosomes are just um, DNA so now we have uh, more diversity in the DNA and we have more potential types of offspring that can be produced. The second type of um, D genetic diversity, or the second way genetic di diversity can be increased is during the separation of homologous pairs. Or um, These homologous pairs in the um, cell can be arranged this way before cell division, or they can be arranged this way. And it doesn't matter. There's, it's not right or wrong. 
you know you can go this way and so you can get a variety of different sex cells that way if we go back we will see the uh, the way this process works um, if you look at the cell in metaphase one this is where the homologous pairs could have lined up in a different way um, with them lined up the way that they are right now you end up with sex cells that have a long blue short blue or a long red short red but if these chromosomes had arranged themselves in a different order so if they had arranged themselves this way homologous pairs still uh, perfectly appropriate the result would be that um, we would have a long red chromosome after and a short blue one after the first division, long blue, short red down here. And the end result would be that the sex cells would be different. So instead of being long blue and short blue, they are now long red, short blue, and long blue, short red. And those are cells which are genetically different. So the final way that diversity, genetic diversity, can um, be increased is through random fertilization during sexual reproduction. And what this means is that we have egg cells here, here, and here. Uh, we have sperm cells here, here, and here. And those cells, depending upon which cell fertilizes the egg, can create different kind of offspring. So here, if this was the fertilization that occurred, the result would be a cell which has long red, long yellow, short red, short purple. Um, if it had been this chromosome or this sperm cell, we would have long blue, long yellow, short blue, short purple. If the red cell had ended up in an egg cell that looked like this, it would be long red, long purple, short red, short yellow. You get the idea. So depending upon which sperm ends up fertilizing which egg, we also can end up with increased genetic diversity or increased combinations of chromosomes because of random fertilization. There's no way to control which egg is going to end up being fertilized by which sperm. And keep in mind that these are, you know, the long chromosome contains certain genes on it, but they are different colors to represent that some of those genes came from the mother and some came from the father. So the long chromosome might carry the, the gene for eye color or hair color. And if, it, if it's the mother's version, you will be passing on in your sperm the, your mother's version of eye color. Um, if it's your father's version that ended up in the sperm cell, you will be passing on your father's version of eye color. Okay. Likewise with the, the egg cell, um, you know, if, if the eye color is on the long chromosome here, which it would be, as eye color is on the long chromosome, then, you know, if this egg got fertilized, then the the mother, the yellow version, would 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 be fertilized, and you would have um, random fertilization.